in any accreditation process, I think there's some doubt from employees and elected officials, and they're not sure what they get from the benefits. As we went through it, I think they became more confident at the completion and getting the accreditation. Our citizens, our elected officials, and our policymakers basically became very excited about it and had a great pride in the fact that we were one of 90 accredited agencies at the time. The Commission has three choices when the peer assessment team uh, makes their recommendations after doing the site visit. They can recommend accredited agency status, denial of accredited agency status, or deferral. Deferral is not a bad choice for an organization. Uh, as they go through the self-assessment process, you're looking internally at your organization. Uh, you're finding opportunities for improvement. You're identifying where there may be weaknesses in your program. And when the peer assessment team comes on site, they may likely find the same things and, and validate what you have recognized as an opportunity to improve in the organization. By going into a deferred status, it gives an organization a chance to continue to work on whatever that opportunity, whatever that weakness was, and improve it within the organization so that at the end of the period, they're better than they were when they started the process. I would say to those departments that are waiting and thinking about accreditation, it takes a lot of courage to bring in unknown peers in your profession to look at your department, the in, in and outs of everything. But it's critical that you have this objective opinion. I believe we owe it to our citizens to give the best service possible. We should set high quality benchmarks and we can do this through the accreditation system.